Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. be from Denny Abla from uh, the General Atomics. Atomics. From General Atomics, from yeah. their uh, fusion laboratory, and talking <coughs> to us about their shared display system. Thanks. <coughs> um, uh, I work for the D3D uh, D3D National, uh, D3D, uh, National uh, Fusion um, Facility, um, which is located in San Diego. And we have been working on uh, several uh, collaboration tools, and one of them is um, a shared display wall uh, based collaboration environment. And the first, uh, my acknowledgments um, the D3D uh, National Lab, uh, uh, D3D National Fusion Facility is uh, funded by uh, Department of Energy. Uh, Office of uh, Fusion Energy Science uh, and operated by uh, General Atomics. Uh, and all the research work uh, is done by the uh, National Fusion Collaboration Project. Uh, the team is, uh, this project is a kind of pilot project. Uh, the team members are from uh, Argonne National Lab, uh, General Atomics, uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab, uh, MIT, uh, Princeton Plasma Physics Lab, uh, and the Princeton Computers, uh, Princeton University Computer Science Department and the Computer Science Department of uh, University of Utah. And this project is also funded by Department of Energy, uh, Office of uh, Advanced Scientific Computing Research. Uh, my talk's key points is um, I will uh, explain uh, uh, why the collaboration is important uh, for the fusion research. Uh, and then uh, I will talk about uh, uh, the collaboration tools uh, deployed at uh, uh, D3D National Fusion Facility. Uh, and uh, I will specifically talk about um, one of those tools, which is a large format uh, shared display wall uh, system, which is being used in the uh, control room environment. And uh, for this, actually, uh, we uh, the shared display wall system is being used like for three uh, th three purposes. The so one purpose is uh, it displays uh, real time information about uh, experiment status and the group activity in the control room. Uh, and the second usage of this large format shared display wall is uh, it enables uh, data analysis results. Uh, among the researchers in the control room. And the third uh, functionality is each facilitates large screen space for uh, video conferencing tools uh, for remote participation. Uh, at the end, uh, I will uh, share uh, our results uh, and I also talk about the future work. <clears throat> First, let me explain uh, what is fusion. Uh, and I know um, a lot of you uh, are from uh, computer science background, uh, not uh, on this fusion field. So uh, the fusion is actually the energy source of sun. Uh, so uh, fusion is a kind of nuclear reaction uh, when two light, uh, two small atoms um, uh, go in, um, combined into one atom. Uh, it's a kind of uh, nuclear reaction. And when it happens, a lot of energy will be released. Uh, it's uh, a very hot uh, reaction. Uh, and it's, uh, it will go on in the uh, plasma environment. Uh, its fuel is uh, hydrogen. Uh, and it has a high energy density. Um, you can imagine one pickup truck uh, fusion fuel uh, can generate uh, the energy uh, uh, of uh, 21,000 um, real cars of coal. Uh, so that's why it is interesting. And it's also clean uh, than uh, fission. Uh, so uh, that's why this research is going on uh, for more than 50 years. <coughs> 
So uh, in the U.S., uh, there are three main uh, major facilities. Uh, one of them is <coughs> located uh, MIT, uh, and the second one is uh, in uh, Princeton University, and the third one uh, is in General Atomics, San Diego, uh, which is I uh, came from. And it's actually a large, uh, each of them are a kind of international facilities. Um, so if you look at uh, <coughs> Uh, D3D, in the year 2004, uh, the, the people, our scientists, came from 90 institutions worldwide, and it has uh, 425 uh, active users, and 317 scientific authors, and actually, <coughs> uh, faculty and the students are from uh, 65 universities for research purposes. And now, uh, the current uh, trend of the fusion research is actually the fusion uh, experiments are growing in size and complexity. So uh, in each uh, experiment, uh, in each uh, device, uh, the number of sensors and det detectors are growing. Uh, so uh, acquired data is getting larger. Uh, data analysis uh, improved with this uh, and actually uh, people are getting older um, and the group is uh, getting larger too. Uh, on the other hand, the number of uh, fusion facilities are uh, decreasing. The ITER, uh, actually International Thermonuclear Experiment Reactor, uh, it's the next generation uh, fusion experiment device. Uh, that will be built in France, and it's a, a 12 billion uh, dollar project in the next 30 years. Um, so it's a real huge device. If you can, if you look at the device, you can see the person over here. This is a lot. <coughs> uh, so uh, the longer relocation uh, of the U.S. Future is not reasonable, uh, so you can't move thousands of people to France, and so scientists need to work remotely. So why uh, the collaboration is in important here? <coughs> um, fusion experiments are also uh, very time critical operations. Uh, so uh, each uh, the fusion experiment is consists of uh, like series series of pulses or shots. Uh, a pulse or shot is when you turn on the device and make that reaction happen uh, in uh, for like uh, several seconds and then take the data, uh, analyze the results and plan the next shot uh, and set the parameters and this, this kind of uh, this cycle repeats in every uh, 20 seconds. So you need to analyze uh, those data results in that 20, 20 minutes uh, time period. Because of that nature of the fusion uh, experiments, the collaboration and remote participation is very important. Uh, so uh, it, the experiment control room is a very complex environment. So uh, there were 20 to 50 people uh, work towards the uh, same goal. And the team consists of scientists, uh, engineers, uh, technicians, and the computer uh, the scientists or computer support people. And so the group activity awareness and the collaboration is uh, very critical. Uh, so you need to know uh, what other people are doing in the control room environment. And experiment team also includes remote participants. So uh, there are only several uh, sites, fusion experiment devices worldwide. But um, scientists, uh, we have uh, thousands of scientists worldwide from schools, from national labs. Uh, so they are um, uh, dispersely located. Uh, so they need to access uh, experimental data and to participate discussions. And sometimes they not only uh, like passively participate, uh, 
uh, listen in, but they also sometimes just lead the experiment. So the collaboration between uh, remote parties are also very important. <clears throat> because of those reasons, uh, the various tools are deployed to support the fusion research uh, collaboration. Uh, the U.S. National Fusion Collaborative Project uh, is uh, um, the project uh, pilot project, which, was, which I mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, it's actually uh, working uh, to build uh, collaboration environments for the fusion research. Uh, the research uh, is actually involved in several areas. Uh, one is grid-based computation and the collaboration services uh, for experiment and the simulation, uh, and security, visualization, team collaboration within the control room, and remote participation. Um, as a result of those research, uh, the uh, NFC deployed several software tools to support control room collaborations. Uh, one is a secure data management system and remote computing, uh, access grid, uh, instant messaging, and a large format shared display wall uh, system, which is the topic of this talk. <coughs> so <coughs> first let's look at the shared display walls, uh, how it works in the, uh, how it helps um, in the uh, uh, control room environment. Uh, shared displays are mostly built uh, with, by tiling several, uh, big, uh, several displays together, make a big uh, high resolution uh, screen. Uh, so it can display multiple visual information that normally doesn't fit in a normal computer screen. So it has uh, a lot higher resolution. And it is capable of presenting multiple aspects of the experimental activity at the same time. And it also, as a shared display, also provides large uh, visual space, so the presented information visible for all team members uh, in the control room. But uh, the challenges in uh, software development that match the need of the control room. So uh, what to display and how to display is important because it's, it's not just uh, like uh, the testing something, it's just a real uh, working, uh, serious uh, scientific environment. Uh, so uh, this, these are the work of uh, NFC project and uh, um, so you can see uh, the three uh, control rooms. So one is uh, NSTX in the university, uh, Princeton University and the second one is the D3D control room and the third one is the uh, CMOD uh, control room. So all, uh, all control rooms has different shape, different size and the layout is very different uh, and even um, all of them are as a fusion experiments, but uh, it's, uh, all uh, their missions are different. So they have a little bit different um, goal and uh, um, the usage of the control room. So uh, those uh, tiled uh, shared displays are also um, uh, different. <coughs> so uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, this video. Uh, the shared display wall in the D3D control room. Uh, we uh, built uh, the shared display by using, um, by uh, tiling three uh, 50 inch uh, display cubes. And it, uh, this um, shared display is 150 inch, uh, actually, um, uh, so it's like three uh, screen um, uh, resolution. And our deployment is a two-step process. Uh, the first step is um, identify uh, experiment-related uh, critical information that is common interest of majority uh, team members. And then develop uh, new tools or customize our existing desktop tools uh, for the shared display environment. Um, 
so uh, as a result, uh, we deployed uh, shared um, like three uh, three types of uh, shared display wall uh, software tools. Uh, the first category is uh, visualization tools that provide up-to-date information about uh, experiment status. And the second category is data analysis results, uh, which can uh, let the um, researchers share uh, their data analysis results with other members of the team. And the third is remote participation and uh, video conferencing tools. The first category visualization tools for experiment, uh, experiment status update. Uh, they uh, mostly provide real-time information uh, about experiment st status and the group activity. So our very first tool is uh, Plasma Shape Movie Player, uh, which is the plasma shape. Uh, when you uh, do the, um, when the reaction happen, um, it generates the plasma. The plasma shape is a very critical uh, aspect of the, of the experiment. So scientists know, uh, according to the shape, they will know uh, how the shape how the, uh, the reaction uh, went and uh, uh, which parameters they need to change for the next uh, shot. Uh, so um, this uh, tool is um, after each um, shot is taken, it takes the data uh, and then uh, generates, uh, uh, visualize it and it generates a movie and then plays it uh, play that movie until the next shot is taken. So, um, like, it will play about 20 minutes. And then when a new shot is taken, it reads new data again and then uh, do the same thing. But this, uh, all this done is by, like, automatically. Uh, it's triggered by um, uh, MDS Plus events, uh, which is MDS, is, uh, MDS Plus is uh, our uh, data storage uh, and the data management system. And the second tool is uh, the electronic log ticker application. So what this do is, uh, in the control room, uh, we have so many people, like 20 to 50 people. All of them uh, is responsible for the different aspects of the experiment. So they have their own interpretation and they have their own goal. So all of them, uh, like for the formal decisions or uh, like data uh, analysis results, they keep log. So each of them can uh, submit the log. And, and so this part is uh, many users. So these, like they can uh, submit their uh, comments on the experiment. When, um, when somebody uh, submits a comment um, on real time, uh, the log will be entered in a uh, relational database, uh, and then also it sends event to the MDS Plus system. The MDS Plus system works here as a relay, so it can relay the event to uh, our log uh, ticker application. So it triggers and then log ticker application comes back and reads the new, newest comment uh, from the relational database and then it displays and that's the uh, log ticker. Because of the kind of uh, shape of our uh, shared display wall, so it's uh, really long and thin uh, log ticker application. And another tool is uh, data analysis monitor. Uh, so this tool is, um, so when the experiment goes on, um, in, the, in the experiment device, there are uh, thousands of detectors or sensors. Each of them creates, generates some kind of data. And then by, after each shot is taken, uh, there are several applications which is running and then analyze this data uh, and do some computational job. But it's very hard to track uh, how those uh, applications are doing. Uh, if something went wrong, uh, it is very hard to track. So this uh, application is uh, 
just monitors uh, what's going on with those applications or data acquisition status. So that's the uh, this is the um, experiment device, and it um, saves the data here. Uh, and the applications uh, after each shot, applications will uh, be turned on automatically, and. If something goes wrong or like any status is monitored here, and this is a kind of complicated system which has own rules, uh, and it just detects if something went wrong with the uh, with the data analysis uh, process. So if something goes wrong, uh, it uh, reports uh, on the user uh, uh, on the user interface block. Uh, and uh, our display wall is connected to there uh, and then uh, displays on the display wall. But uh, if, if you have, uh, it, it um, generates so much detailed information and if you display all of someone's display wall, it's hard to see. Uh, so what we did is uh, we uh, kind of categorized those um, uh, those uh, data analysis uh, processes, uh, and uh, on on that uh, picture, actually, uh, some of them um, means uh, some type of code. Some of them are some type of data. So it is color coded, uh, and the gray is in progress. The green is uh, it went okay. Uh, if something went wrong, and it displays a red. So people can uh, just, uh, if there is red, people can go and just check what's going on with that specific code or with that specific data. And uh, another category, the second category is data analysis results sharing system. This actually uh, captures captures the user's screen. Uh, as the image, and then it sends that image to the uh, shared display wall. So if somebody, uh, the originally what people do is, if somebody has uh, something new on, on the, their uh, data analysis, and just bring other people and invite, see, look at my screen and something is going on here. And in this, uh, after we installed this uh, shared display wall, we implemented this. So if somebody has something interesting, just push the button and then it will be displayed on the screen and everybody in the uh, control room can see it. And this is um, actually integrated in, in the ideal based uh, visualization library, uh, JPlot object. Uh, so uh, any any type of application which uses this visualization library uh, just can use it. So it's almost all of our uh, data analysis tools. And it's also integrated in our uh, toolbar application. So uh, anybody who's in the control room or even remote so using our this application, just click um, this button and then it displays their screen to the uh, shared display. Uh, but this is only like just captures the snapshot and then displays it. <coughs> and then another data uh, analysis sharing system is VNC based uh, because the, the, on the original one uh, it's just image. You, people can't see your cursor. Uh, or other other activity, not on real time. So this is uh, this is based on uh, original VNC protocol, uh, which uh, shares individual uh, windows rather than entire desktop, and the shared windows can be positioned independently uh, on the shared display. And we implemented a, uh, another tool, which is. Uh, simultaneously, uh, uh, users can interact with the shared display. If something is displayed over there, uh, the, any, any user in the control room uh, can move their um, cursor to the edge of their own screen, and then it will be displayed. Actually, their cursor will be displayed on the shared display wall, so they can control. Uh, how it is implemented is, um, 
so uh, everybody has one cursor. So uh, it's uh, each combines. So multi cursor X events combine into a single uh, event system. Uh, so uh, so it slices the time, uh, and it, uh, it slices the time events uh, of the X event. So uh, at the end, it. Uh, just goes to the event handler, and the original uh, the shared displays uh, cursor as uh, cursor zero here, and then um, it also uh, gives cursor from one to seven. Uh, currently, we have like seven colors. So if you sit next to each other, one uh, can be red cursor, and the other one is blue cursor. So you can you don't mix with another. So at the end, uh, it, the, everything comes, uh, becomes to cursor uh, zero button and key events so just passes through. And as a third category, uh, we are also using a shared displayable system uh, for uh, remote participation. Uh, as I um, talked about a little bit, little bit early, uh, the remote participants are also uh, very important. So uh, the live, uh, we displayed the streams, video streams of Access Grid and the VRVS from remote sites. Uh, the life-sized video of remote participant gave realistic impression to the whole uh, the control room. So some, uh, when uh, a, a scientist from uh, like UK uh, led the experiment uh, in the D3D control room, actually we uh, displayed his video image on the screen, and then he can talk directly to anybody in the. Uh, and it can make announcements to the, uh, the control room. And we also have a, a controllable camera installed in the control room. Actually, it's facing directly to the shared display. So um, the people from remote sites can see what's displayed on the screen through the camera. Actually, they can move, uh, zoom, or they can uh, pan tilt uh, from uh, through the web interface. So uh, one example uh, is a remote scientist. A remote scientist in UK uh, was leading experiment uh, in the D3D control room, and then actually he shared his screen snapshot image to the wall, and then used the camera and look at what he dis what like he displayed uh, in the screen. Uh, finally, uh, this is the uh, the screen capture of the D3D uh, shared display wall. Um, so on the left is a shared data analysis result uh, by uh, submitted by a scientist, uh, and the second one is real time uh, the next uh, real time signal plots, uh, and this is a data analysis monitor report. Uh, and this is the plasma shape movie player, and that's the uh, video of a remote collaborator. Actually, uh, I think he's from uh, Japan, uh, participating uh, the experiment remotely. And on the bottom is electronic log ticker application. So uh, this is a kind of long process to deploy. Uh, this uh, shared display in the control room environment. So we had learned some lessons. And uh, we realized, uh, first we thought, oh, okay, uh, we can just move everything on the desktop to the shared wall. It should work. But it didn't. Uh, because like the GUI and the layout and the color and the cursor, everything just didn't work for that environment. And uh, like for the multi-cursor X uh, system, we had like 16-bit like normal uh, <coughs> Linux cursor, and nobody can see it from remote. So we made it like 64, 64 uh, pixel that big, and some like people still complain about it. So we are thinking to increase like 128 by 128 cursor, and also colors are uh, just different over there. You need to think about colors, fonts, everything. 
And the second thing is collaboration tools needs to be easy to use and should not request extra effort. And when we, when we first used the VNC, it somehow uh, kind of slowed down the people's their own screen. So people didn't like it. And they, they just kind of reluctant to use. Um, and the third, not all of the tools from computer science labs directly work for control room environment. And for the, for, like many research, just kind of, uh, like think about many, uh, they assume many unreal things. Uh, but in the control room, you have a lot, lot of things you, you really uh, should think about. Just, um, uh, we, we had a lot of experiences, like uh, when we uh, bring some uh, new result of the computer research into the control room, just it didn't uh, quite work. So it, it kind of like a lot of ping pong process, we need to harden it, we need to make it really robust. Uh, so finally, uh, just we made some tools work. And also, uh, location and the size of the shared display and the light, lightning in the control room needs to be carefully planned. Um, first, like we put like white background uh, for the display, and then uh, all the scientists just don't, didn't like it, and just uh, it's um, uh, and we changed li lighting, a uh, lot of things and then uh, they accept it. So results and the future work, and as a result, uh, we uh, successfully uh, deployed a shared display, and it's actually uh, has been utilized uh, in the experimental campaign in last year, um, and it uh, um, it is working as a, a public presentation space for experimental status and the group uh, activity, and it also work working. It is working as a large whiteboard space for information sharing, and it's also a large screen uh, for uh, displaying video of remote participant. So, uh, deployment uh, of course has been a, a, a iterative process. Uh, the final results have been well received by the experimental team, uh, and uh, uh, we, were, uh, we also identified so some future work uh, needs to be done in the next step. Uh, one uh, first thing is, of course, increase the usability and make it more robust. And the second, uh, we have uh, uh, deployed a lot of tools for collaboration and remote participation, but they're all uh, their own, the pieces. If you want to use them, they're all uh, like many, many windows on somebody's screen, it's just cluttered. So we are thinking to integrate with other new collaboration technologies. Uh, one is uh, instant messaging, we are working on instant messaging. Uh, so if uh, somebody has uh, an announcement or something, they can just uh, write something on, the, on their instant messaging client and it will appear on the display, display wall. And the other thing, uh, make it, we are thinking about to make a service of Access Grid. Uh, and some uh, remote participants are really uh, interested in seeing what's going on on the shared display. So we are thinking about uh, web-based streaming to the remote participants from some web portal. Uh, and the last one is a more flexible control mechanism. Uh, that's what we want to uh, work on. That's, that's all. Any questions? Thank you.